Like when I started investigating the MH370 videos, the, the first surprise for me was that I started looking up wormhole scientific papers. And I found three that were all after 2020 that all said that wormholes are humanly traversable. I had been under the impression that a wormhole was like maybe something that's like a black hole, but it would annihilate you if you went through it. I didn't think it was actually a real thing. And so then I start researching and you find out like, oh no, these a bunch of engineers and scientists had said that like, no, you theoretically should be able to get through a wormhole. And you're going, huh, okay, maybe we will go and look down this route. And the next thing you run into is something called ER equals EPR. Einstein Rosen, aka a wormhole, is equal to Einstein Rosen Poldowski, which is quantum entanglement. It takes the idea of scale invariance. Things that are really small can be made to be very big, and things that are very big can be made to be very small. And it unifies those ideas. It says maybe a wormhole, a macroscopic wormhole, is equivalent to quantum entanglement. Maybe they're the exact same thing. Hmm. Holy grail of physics has been and is the unification of these two realms into something like a quantum theory of gravity, which we don't currently have. Einstein himself was working on this idea of unification until his last days. In fact, he, along with his collaborator, Nathan Rosen, in attempting to create this unified theory of quantum gravity, published what is now called the ER paper for Einstein and Rosen. Together, they developed the concept of a certain type of wormhole called an Einstein-Rosen or ER bridge. The idea is you start with a flat space-time, then you add something super heavy, like a black hole that breaks space-time, something that creates a kind of hole in the fabric of space-time because of a theoretical singularity which would occur at its center. So you can see right away how this connects the idea of a black hole to a wormhole is they're saying, okay, we've got this flat space time. Okay. We're going to say just to simplify things, let's say space time is flat and now we're going to bend it. Well, if we bend it a lot, now we're changing the geometry. We're changing the geometry of space time. So now you can do what we just saw there, which is we can make a bridge between two points that weren't previously connected before. That's what Einstein Rosen ER was showing the point of infinite mass density. Thus, you get a kind of tube-like structure of space-time that ends up at the singularity. Now, if you have this same construction somewhere else in space, then you could just imagine these two tubes connecting such that you don't have a singularity anymore, but rather a tube that connects one space-time to the other space-time. This is a wormhole. It's like a bridge from one part of space-time to another. How crazy it this science is just it's just real science. Like this is Einstein's equations, the same equations we use every day, the basis for all physics. This is Einstein's equations taken to its extreme. So when people say this is just theoretical, what do you mean it's theoretical? This isn't theoretical. Einstein's equations are proven to be real, proven to be true. Many, many times over. But that some people, the same people that say Einstein's equations are real, all this stuff, they go, Yes, but you're not allowed to break them like you just did. You're not allowed to break. What do you mean? It's not even me who came up with this. This is Einstein who came up with this. <laughs> All Einstein stuff is correct, except for they just don't believe that this part's real for some reason. And here's the, here's the rub. Like many things in physics, the academics, their math isn't wrong. Their math's not wrong. Their conceptual view is what's wrong. Their conceptual view is what's wrong. We're not physically making a tube. We're not physically making a tube that the object's going through. That's not what happened. That's not what's happening in the MH370 videos. It's more confusing than that, actually. <laughs> what we're seeing is like the plane is there and then it's just not there. And presumably it's somewhere else the next instant. So the tube, the tunnel, the throat is more of a concept of us thinking about it. It's not necessarily what we would physically see. That's what I want people to understand. Because people ask me, Ashton, they say, what would it look like from the perspective of the people on board the plane? And I always say it would look like walking through a doorway. 
You're not going to be like in some kind of tube, like hyperspace, like in the movies. No, you're just going to instantly be somewhere else. Now, it so happens just prior to publishing this paper, Einstein, Rosen, and another collaborator by the name of Boris Podolsky had published what is known as the EPR paper, in which they argued that quantum mechanics is incomplete because of something called quantum entanglement. This is a phenomenon in which a pair of particles can be created in such a way that their quantum states are linked to each other. They're linked such that the act of measuring, for example, the spin of one particle, instantly determines the spin of its entangled pair, no matter how far apart they are. So the EPR paper argued that this is not possible because it would require information transfer instantly or faster than the speed of light, breaking causality. Now here is where it gets interesting. What if the wormhole from the ER paper and the phenomenon of entanglement from the EPR paper were theoretically connected? What if two entangled particles very far apart were exchanging information instantly because they were intimately connected via a wormhole through which this information could transfer through space-time instantly? Wow. Look at that end. When he, they just overlay the two on top of each other, it's like, it's, isn't it just obvious? Like, clearly, the idea of a wormhole a opening and a closing in one point for conservation to hold true, it should be the same as entanglement. Like, it, that, they seem like they obviously must be connected when you look at them conceptually. You say, they're really explaining the same kind of concept, aren't they? One person brought up in the comments said, we're just now working on information transfer using quantum entanglement. No, we've got information transfer figured out. In fact, John Kramer explains it in his dirt. His, I'm not gonna pull it up right now, but you can watch the, inter, uh, the live streams from last week. John Kramer explains it. He says they figured out how to do signaling with a quantum system. Here's the rub. In that video, it said, Theoretically, they don't think it's possible because it would cause retro causality. Faster than light communication would cause retro causality. That's fine. Don't do faster than light communication. Set it up so that it's just instantaneous, instantaneous transmission. As long as it's instantaneous and not retro causal, then there's no causality break. That's what John Kramer says. And he's right. I the moment I find one of these defense intelligence reference document authors these and then you find out he's a exp experimental nuclear physicist yeah i'm gonna pay real close attention to what his view is on quantum mechanics so he says this the solution have it not be retro causal maybe nature doesn't allow us to go back in time and then the answer to the question of how do you communicate how do you use quantum entanglement to communicate faster than light the answer is you create a switch. You create a switch. So you have two connected systems, a sender and a receiver, and the transmitter sends to the receiver a one or a zero. It sends it a one or a zero in the form of an interference pattern. Either they see an interference pattern or they see two slits. I mean, a one or a zero. You either see coherence or decoherence. And now you have a switch. So you actually don't need to, let's say, let's say this is something that's spinning. And I say, okay, I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. And you say, okay, the entangled particle is also going to turn 90 degrees. You don't even need to do that. You don't even need to do that. That's the crazy part. They figured out how to turn quantum entanglement into a switch that turns on or off the coherence pattern. And that gives you binary. And once you have binary, you can send any message you want. Boom.